Hey folks, Captain Mike here from Hoagie Lure Company. Now, we've done a number of cod fishing shoots for Salty Cape TV over the years. I'm just gonna take a minute while we're back at the dock to walk through the mechanics of a cod fishing trip. Now, there's different cod regulations um, in different places. Uh, we're on the south side of Cape Cod, and um, as I sit here now, cod season opens up August 1st, but that changes from year to year, so first tip is be sure you know your local cod regulations. So let's talk outfits for cod. Now, here in New England, most of the cod fishing spots are also tuna fishing spots. And so, and a lot of the jigs we use for tuna in deep water overlap with a lot of the jigs we use for cod fishing. So for those reasons, I keep cod fishing very simple because I would say in my case anyway, 75% uh, of my cod fishing is in the form of plan B to a tuna trip. And so I'll use whatever rods I have when offshore, if that's all I got for cod fish. So, here I have a seven foot medium heavy spinning rod. That's what I got, that's what I'll use. Here I have a jigging outfit, conventional. That's what I got, that's what I'll use. And uh, you know, either way, you're good to go. And so as far as cod fishing goes, one thing I will say is uh, braid will get you down to the bottom as quickly as possible. Uh, some of my lighter outfits like I have here, my hoagie hybrid rod, I have that little avid reel spooled up with 60 pound test braid, so it's like infinity yards of line. I don't even know the exact amount. And then just a little top shot of whatever wind on floral leader I'm using, and then I'll just you know connect a jig peaky rig like I have here and a heavy sand eel jig, also the same jig I'm using for tuna. Now, um, yeah, there's not a whole lot to be said, but uh, a couple of attributes I'll talk about for cod fishing. I like a soft parabolic action because you're pulling these cod sometimes up from 300 feet of water and if you have a soft forgiving rod if they get bouncy or you know start hopping around on a heavy jig that soft blank will be more forgiving in terms of um, getting the fish to the boat side if it's too stiff or too fast the fish can sort of bounce itself off your rig so let's start with the lure in this case a jig really depends on your water depth. Now here in the Cape, for example, we really have two bodies of water where we might encounter cod. Uh, south of Martha's Vineyard for us, you know, that can typically be between 120 and 160 feet of water. And so size, in terms of weight, I use a hoagie sand eel jig, six and a half ounce on lighter current days, eight and a half ounce on heavier current days. Now sometimes I'll fish east of Chatter in the easternmost tip of Cape Cod, and I'll be up to 300 feet of water there, in which case 12 ounce or what I have here, a 16 ounce jig are my go-tos to get down to the bottom. Now, I am also a big fan of having teasers, and here I have the Hoagie Jig Beaky Rig. Now, you'll notice that I have two teaser hooks. These are heavy duty, ultra sharp, live bait hooks with olive and pink colored beaky hair on them. And it's my opinion that these, these little rigs imitate crabs. And I just know from experience here in the Northeast that you know one of the codfish's favorite forages, haddock too, um, are the small little crabs that we find offshore. And so that's why I have these small teasers with lots of flash and proper color patterns and a, a big heavy classic sand eel size jig. Now in terms of colors, I have the uh, natural match the hatch olive color sand eel, but there are days where the high vis pink or the high vis green um, is the way to go in terms of calling them in. So one of my favorite things about ground fishing in deep water is it's very forgiving in terms of technique. Uh, the name of the game really is getting your jig to the bottom and in the zone and maintaining your position and bottom. Uh, some anglers will fish jigs fast. I almost 
never fast jig or speed jig as they would say uh, for cod i'm more of a slow and low um, angler when it comes to jigging for cod um, you would almost think i'm not even fishing at all if you were to look i'll send these baits down and i won't even move the lure at all just the boat drifting rocking and rolling this sand eel jig is going to be lifting up and off the bottom but more importantly these teasers are just going to be quivering above the jig and i would say 75 percent of my monster cod come in on these small little teasers and so i don't want to i don't want to mess with that i want to have this whole program just sort of bouncing and twitching right off the bottom right right in the mud or right in the gravel whatever the structure is and so i'll just let it sit almost as if i'm fishing bait and i would say at least 50 percent of the times i get hits just from drifting with it the other 50 percent of the times my hookups happen from lifting the rod real slow and dropping it now a third sort of advanced technique, if you will, is the twitchy technique, where I'll send this to the bottom and just twitch, 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 twitch the rod, just sending a vibration through the whole outfit and just making these baits dance or dart, dance and dart. But in all honesty, that's really more of a shallow water technique because I feel like that twitchy retrieve or twitchy jig, if you will, um, does get a little bit lost when you start pushing close to 300 feet of water. Now, in terms of finding cod, it's, uh, well, A, easy, but B, it's a little bit of a trial and error. And so, well, for starters, you want to make sure you know your regulations and that the season is, in fact, open. But anywhere you'll find tuna, you're likely to find codfish and haddock offshore. And so you want to look for structure. You're, um, on my boat, the Navionics chip that I have in my unit, uh, shows lots of little humps and ridge lines. On top of that, you want to idle along and look for live bottom. Sometimes I call it furry bottom on my unit. Um, it'll be just a different color depending on the unit. Um, you know, a mine, it's a you know darker, more olive color bottom with a little bit of yellow on top. But but look in your manual. You want to look for live bottom, just a little layer of life on top, top of structure. If you mark any bait, sometimes you'll mark a codfish, but at that depth, a lot of times they don't show up. And uh, I'll drop, and if I don't get something right away, I move. If I get dogfish right away, I'll move. And I typically never move more than three or four times before finding my target. But you just have to have patience and just hop from spot to spot. Uh, keep trying, you will catch fish. I've almost, in fact, you know what, I'm going to jinx myself now, but anytime I've been offshore in a plan B, cod situation just by looking for live bottom and structure, I've never even gotten skunked when targeting cod. Now it's a long way to run to go catch cod and I feel like I'm unique in the sense that I'm willing to run 60 miles to go cod fishing. but. All in, it's basically the same gear you would be using tuna fishing. You're in the cod grounds. If you're gonna come home with no tuna, I think it's a no-brainer to come home with a few brown bombers on ice. Mm -hmm. 